Well, this is awkward. Jax Taylor likes the idea of marrying Stassi, which Brittany calls creepy as she talks about their sexless marriage. We have a whole lot more that we'll be getting into. Uh, I hope you're ready for it. Let's get it. You're listening to No Filter with Zach Peter, your go-to source for all the latest pop culture and reality TVT, Sir Fresh, all week long. Now, let's dive in. Welcome on in, welcome on in, welcome on in. Happy hump to everybody, everybody in the club. We got all the energy today. Let's get it. Um, I hope you guys are having a great start to your week. I hope you guys are living life. I hope um, you're getting laid. I hope you're getting lit. All the good things. I'm, this is, I'm, the only reason I'm talking about it is because I'm trying to hold myself accountable. I am, today's day two. No alcohol, no sugar. Um, I did have like like some leftover like dark chocolate that I ate yesterday just to like clear the cabinets and make sure none of the um there was no more like sugar left in the apartment. So there's no alcohol, no sugar in my apartment. I'm doing the dry try at Orange Theory, which is a dry triathlon. It's two thousand meters on the rower, um, three hundred body weight reps, and um, and three miles on the treadmill. So I'm trying to get ready for that and make sure just I'm in the best place, you know, mentally, physically, emotionally. So I'm going to be running out there, running up that hill. Um, so I'm getting ready for that, but I'm like, I need to, so I may be annoying for the next two weeks as I'm in my Kyle Richards era. Um, be like, I'm not drinking right now. I'm not drinking right now, but it's just that I hold myself accountable every day. Yesterday, all I wanted was like a fucking Aperol spritz. I went out to lunch with my friend Jacques. He was in downtown. And so we hung out and we had lunch and we went shopping and we were at my apartment and brainstorming about a project that we're working on. Um, and I was like, fuck, I just want an Aperol spritz. It's like brunch. I'm out to lunch. Like who doesn't want an Aperol? Like it's very Stassi Schroeder, I know. But um, but yeah. So yeah, you're going to hear about it. So just be forewarned now you're gonna hear about it um just wanted to give a shout out to randy scott who said love you zach with three heart emojis on uh apple Podcasts." thank you for the shout out also uh deidra mc wrote carlos and zach such a great interview with zach and carlos king zach really brought out a different side of carlos zach is so much more than just a spicy messy funny guy he's an excellent interviewer Thank you guys for the love. I love you. I appreciate you. And I hope you guys um, know how much all your sweet messages mean to me. Okay. Shall we dive into the tea now? Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Uh, tea time. Let's see. What should we start with? Oh, let's start with this because this is kind of interesting. Hilaria Baldwin. Remember her? She's Alex Baldwin's um, wife. She was one with like a fake accent. People thought, you know, she was very direct with her accent. Well, apparently she has talked to Real Houses of Beverly Hills producers or at least casting. Well, yeah, at least casting producers or maybe development producers. Um, but she has been in talks about potentially joining Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, or at least this is according to a source that has now leaked this info. Um, so, yeah. Do we would we want someone like Hilaria Baldwin, Hilaria, on Real Houses of Beverly Hills? I don't know. I feel like that would be interesting. Well, now that it's like being taught, well, I guess she hasn't officially commented on it. I believe Kyle Richards was asked about the potential rumors. Um, a source close to Hilaria says that she's terrified of losing all the attention that she's gained as the wife of a Hollywood star if he's away in prison. I don't think he's going to prison. Do we think Alex Baldwin is going to go to prison? No. Do we? No. Come on. Alex Baldwin? Come on. That would be wild um, if he did. But anyway, the insider says that this would be a perfect fit for her to join Real Houses of Beverly Hills. And then Kyle Richards was asked about it. And Kyle's like, I think it would be, a, uh, she's like, I don't, I'm not against it. Because I guess Kyle knows her and is friendly with her. Kyle thinks that it would work, but she lives in New York. So that wouldn't work. Um, but Kyle's like, I don't know, maybe if she got the offer, she would move. Which I think, you know, 
no, no, Alec, Alec, sorry. I, did I say Alex? I didn't mean Alex Baldwin. I meant Alec Baldwin. Um, if I said Alex, it might be a little slip of the tongue. I'm still trying to adjust my Invisalign, which by the way, look at my teeth, guys. They're getting so much better. Shout out to Dr. Gabe Rosenthal. Go see Dr. Gabe Rosenthal. If you're in NC, no, he does housewives. He does reality stars. He does, does Vanderpump people. He does like influencers. He does all the peeps. So if you are in the Valley, it's funny. Last time I saw him, we were talking about that. He's like, why am I not on the Valley? I actually live in the Valley. And I was like, I know. Um, so yeah, I don't know if I could see Hilaria joining Real Houses of Beverly Hills. I feel like that would just be weird. Maybe a cameo, but I don't know if I can see her like legit joining the show. And as Kyle said, she lives in New York. So I don't even think that would make a ton of sense. Um, Meg says, love you talking about autism in a real way. I used to work with children two to five years old with autism. And you were a warrior for showing what autism really looks like. Thank you. I know you're a real one because the term warrior is something that is used throughout the autism community quite a bit. Um, because I see all the moms and the dads and even, you know, the individuals with autism as warriors, you know, gearing up for battle every day and killing it. Um, but interesting that you've said that, though, because Jacques was here yesterday um, at my apartment brainstorming about this new project that we have in development right now and i'm sitting here on and i look to check my phone and i'm like uh oh and he's like what and i'm like i just got a dm from someone and they're like i don't know if you're aware of this but dot 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 and it's a there's an attachment and i was like fuck what now what am i like what is it like i always get anxiety when people send me stuff like that and jock's like i can't deal with stuff when people send me stuff like that like i would rather not know that it's out there and i was like i actually like knowing when stuff's out there that way i'm at least aware and prepared um but so it was a screenshot about like this whole reddit thread that like somebody posted about the autism comments um that i made on my podcast and on instagram because i have a brother with autism and i used to work in the autism community, I used to fundraise and help families, um, which is interesting because I think I'm going to work on something new with those families. Families because I've been in contact; they've reached out to me, and I've been in contact with them a lot again, which has reminded me of a lot of the good work that we used to do. Um, that I'm still really grateful that I got to be a part of, and you know. Um, but anyway, there was just like this nasty thread that these people were writing about the comments that I made about Holly Madison and Tallulah, which I thought it was very clear. I wasn't trying to diminish or take away anybody's experiences, but I wanted to show a different side of autism. I feel like the higher functioning side of the spectrum gets to kind of, um, tell their stories, but the, the more severe side of autism, we don't get to see, you know, those parents don't get to showcase and, and share their stories because they don't have a platform, number one. And number two, um, their lives, you know, are debilitating. They're busy. They're, you know, they don't have time to go on the internet and be like, this is what autism really looks like. They just don't have that. Like, that's just not part of the reality. And I think someone like Holly Madison, after watching her for several years on reality television, she was on the girls next door. She had her own reality show called Holly's world. I read her book. Um, think she's a great person. I've listened to and watched many of her interviews. To me, there aren't any indicators that there is any autism present. And if it it is. It's very, very high function. And I don't think that that should be the representation of autism because most people then are like, oh, you're just a little quirky. Your brain just works a little differently. When I'm like, no, there are many, many families that don't have the privilege of being able to share that. And their stories deserve to be told in addition to the people that are speaking out about their own autism diagnosis. But my issue is there are a lot of people, especially like on TikTok recently, influencers that are self-diagnosing. So that's what I was speaking to. The people that go online and they go on, you know, uh, WebMD and they look at traits and they're like, oh my God, I, I think I have autism. And so it's like this identity that people are trying to give themselves when I've been very clear that like my brother's autism diagnosis is not attached to his identity. He is a full, capable, worthy, smart, intelligent, strong, young man in this world that is not defined by his autism. It is not his identity. Um, and even though autism has, it is a diagnosis that he has, and it has made his life more challenging, you know, that doesn't mean that he's any less than, you know, and I thought I made that very clear. Um, but if there was any confusion, I do want to clarify if there's any confusion about what I said about Holly or Tallulah, Tallulah Willis, or, you know, any of the comments that I said um, that may have been misinterpreted. I just want to be very clear and clear up any confusion. Everything I said, I say it with my motherfucking chest and I stand by it. So if you're pissed about it, sorry, 
this is our reality. This is my family. There are multiple families that I've talked to over the weekend that continue to thank me for speaking out because that's their reality as well. They deserve to be seen. They deserve to be heard. I don't retract anything. I stand by everything that has ever come out of my mouth on this podcast. And I have zero fucking apologies to offer. If you are offended by it, that's on you, baby. I showed up with empathy. I showed up with compassion. I tried to be graceful. And now I'm going to say it with my motherfucking chest. Period. End of story. You want to drag me on Reddit? Go for it. Thank you. Next. Okay. Let's get into the, the Jackson Brittany tea of it all. Shall we? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, yeah. I also want to clarify this. Thank you for bringing this up, Janine. A lot of people did reach out to me about Jackson, Brittany's son, Cruz, and, and are speculating about whether or not Cruz may or may not have autism. I want to set that record straight as well. I don't think it's our place. Um, listen, Cruz is a, he's a child. He is, you know, in early developmental stages. I think that that is their journey. It's very different from a Tallulah or a Holly, right? Where they're grown adults, they're choosing to speak out about their autism diagnosis publicly. Um, whereas in this case, Cruz is a child, he's underage, he, you know, we don't know what their life is like at home. We don't know if he's gotten a diagnosis or not gotten a diagnosis. It's a very personal journey um, for parents. I've seen a lot of moms go through it. So I want to be respectful and mindful. May Does he have traits? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know, but that's not our place to speculate, you know? Um, so I think we just, we need to send Brittany and Jack some love. Send Brittany a lot of love. Um, I mean, listen, if I had an opportunity to have some point of connection with Brittany and that's something that she's interested in, I would love to discuss that with her. But again, um, Cruz is too young to be diagnosed almost anything. I believe about two or three is when they, my brother got his diagnosis. There was, they believed he had autism about two, but he didn't get his official diagnosis until he was three years old. So again, I don't know how old is Cruz. Um, let's see. Jax, Jax, Brittany, son. Oh my God, that's actually a thing um, that people are Googling whether or not he has autism. Oh, because she talked about, oh my God, I just see, I just saw this. Um, oh, oh, Brittany Carwright and Josh Taylor put Sun Cruz too in speech there because he stopped, he stopped talking altogether. I don't ever want to see him struggle. Oh, I guess it was discussed. I haven't watched this week's episode of The Valley yet. I guess that's why people are talking about it. He stopped talking altogether, and now we're going to put him in speech therapy just to make sure he has all the help that he needs. Ooh. I feel like I've been researching everything, and I feel like I've been doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. See, this is the time where we do need to send her some love, guys, and know that I'm sure there are a lot of people that are going to be... Um, a lot of people, they talk about it all the time. Okay, I wasn't aware of that, Nikki. I'm sorry. You're screaming at me with the caps and the live chat. I don't listen to their podcast. I wasn't aware that they had discussed this. But again, it's also not our place to speculate, right? Whatever their journey is going to be, they have to go through that journey on their own. Um, and if and when they're comfortable or willing to talk about that, she talks about it on the Not Skinny, Not Fat podcast. Okay, I again, was not aware of all of these things. This is new information. We're live right now on the internet. This is information that is just coming in. I didn't realize that they were talking about it so much. Maybe he stopped talking because they are arguing all the time. Okay, well, that's not a fair statement, and I don't think that that's appropriate, Russ. Um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, see, my daughter had a regression at 14 months and didn't start speaking until she was four. She was never diagnosed with autism. They're using resources to help him. Okay, that's great, Maria. I'm glad that she's getting the help that she needs. Um, so yeah, I feel for them. My son regressed at two years old, but now speaks and writes. That's incredible. I know, trust me, with Ethan, we've gone through stages of regression, um, especially when puberty hits. That was a whole challenge. Like, you know, we've really been, we've really been through it with my brother. Um, and I, again, haven't talked about it as much publicly, but yeah. Um, I feel for, listen, I, I know these struggles. I know what, you know, a lot of families go through, especially those that don't have children that are on the higher end of the spectrum. Um, it's not to diminish or take away their experiences. I want to make sure everyone's experience is valid, but you know, there are real struggles that families face. Cruz is not yet three. Yeah. I just read, I just read online that he's only two years old, but Brittany talking about that. I mean, listen, early therapies, early intervention, huge 
big thing. So the fact that she's doing that right now, I'm sure there are already possibly conversations about autism being discussed when it comes to Cruz. Um, but again, he is only two years old. Usually a diagnosis doesn't, you know, become more formal until they're at least three years old. And, you know, we'll see. Um, I probably will reach out to her though and just be like, hey girl, listen, if you want to talk, I'm here to talk. If you need some support, I'm here to support. You know, it's it's rough, especially when you're living it out on camera. I know. Um, I'm also really close with Jacqueline Larita whose son Nick has autism. And we've had conversations recently about Autism Awareness Month and what that means and how it can be really challenging for us and really triggering for us, especially when you do see a lot of these self-diagnosed TikTok influencers that are like, oh my God, I think I have autism. You know, I'm 23 years old and I read online about it and I think I may have that. And it's like, it's not a formal diagnosis, it's not a real diagnosis, but they're like, oh my God, this makes sense to me. Um, it just is really invalidating. So, yeah, it is what it is. Does speech therapy help my son so much? See, yeah, speech therapy, especially early on, major. So hopefully that'll help a lot. I remember, trust me, we did OT, ABA, speech therapy. We we did it all. We did all the traditional therapies. We did all the alternative therapies. We had a functional medicine doctor. We did all the lab testing um, to check his gut and check his food allergies. And listen, we've we've done it all, done it all. Um, so yeah, we'll see. We shall see. Um, and with the combo, we can circle back to our combo about the strollers the other day. This is a good lesson. Oh, that's a good point, Michelle. About well, I mean, listen, I I think he was a little big for that stroller. Um, I don't think it, it inhibits your ability to walk. He was a big boy in that stroller. Maybe we just gave him a bigger stroller. He looked like a big boy in that stroller. It was, it was, well, it was. Um, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, but I send them love and hopefully, you know, Cruz is able to reach those milestones that I know she wants. Listen, we saw it play out on the Real Housewives of New Jersey, remember, with Jacqueline Larita and her son Nick. And we saw him, you know, say, I love you on camera. And then we saw regression. And then we saw her go through the struggle of, of Nick regressing and having to like reach those milestones again. And her struggle to see the other women and see them make their milestones in comparison to Nick. And, and it's hard, you know, it's challenging. It's challenging. Um, just what exactly do you think the public will do? The public will do about what? Back in the day, it was bad behavior. Once an adult, they were all good. This is the mild one. I don't you know where that's coming from. Um, Jacqueline showed her life with Nick. Yeah, she did. And it was not easy. And listen, now Nick's getting older. That's the hard part is I remember when they were all cute little kids, right? I remember when Ethan was little. I remember when Nick was little. Um, and now they're growing up. And that's kind of the next thing is it's like they are becoming adults. They don't have the luxury of being able to go on TikTok and talk about their autism. There's not even that full level of awareness, you know? And like there's the reality of like, well, what's the future going to look like? Where are they going to live? And that's why I'm supporting, you know, causes now like home life community. You know, Dr. Jerry Cartsonell, who was my brother's pediatrician. He was also, you know, Jenny, I told you guys, Jenny McCarthy, another good friend of mine. Her son has autism. He was her son's doctor as well. So, and going back and looking at some of like the old footage that we taped with old families and the old campaigns we used to run, it really brought a lot of, um, warmed my heart to see the good work that we did and to catch up with those families now and to see where they're at now. And it's, it's awesome. Um, but a lot more to come. Looking so good, sugar feel. Ooh, sugar, sugar, how you get so high? Sugar, sugar. Oh, Zach, one a month without drinking to help with my weight loss and using Ozempic was good. Drank the weekend of my hubby's birthday, spent Easter and the day after puking my brains out less than okay. Well, you can't just jump back into it, my love. You have to like pace yourself a bit. <laughs> um, okay, but so let's talk about Jackson Stasi. So I guess there was a comment that was made online about how Jax should have married Stassi instead of Brittany, which is weird, which is a weird thing for someone to comment because Jax is now married to Brittany. And Stassi's now married to Bo. Stassi has two kids, seems very happy in her relationship and in her marriage. So it's weird that people would even suggest that Jax should have married Stassi. Stassi was always, you know, better than Jax and was always going to be doing better than Jax. I'm glad to see that they've grown up and, or at least Stassi's grown up a lot. Jax is, you know, He's, he's doing what, you know, 
he's 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 growing for his level of growth, right? Um, but so he liked the comment, which was really strange. So then Brittany went on Not Skinny, Not Fat with Amanda Hirsch, who I adore and has been on this podcast. Um, and Brittany chatted with Amanda about it, and Brittany calls it creepy that he liked the comment which is also kind of weird right because like that's his ex um they're friends with her so to be like when you are married with somebody else why would you be like oh yeah i should have married my ex like i don't know that's weird like how would you feel if your partner your spouse went on to like a comment about how they should have married one of their exes like even if you're on a break right because they're on a break right i don't know Jax wouldn't be alive now if Stassi was married to him. That's not very nice. <laughs> um, interesting. Uh, but would Stassi marry Jax? Good question, B. Douglas. I don't know. Well, I don't think so. Because remember when he really wanted to win her back and then he got his her name tattooed on her arm. You know, it's interesting. The evil Reddit trolls diagnosed Cruz long ago and say they hope he gets taken away from them. See, that's the thing. The people on Reddit, one, they have too much time, and two, they're just disgusting people. They really are. I say that again with my whole fucking chest. If you're on Reddit and you're talking shit about people um, and you have just nasty things to say, your life is sad. You are. I don't know who hurt you. I don't know who broke your heart. I don't know if mama didn't give you enough hugs when you were a kid growing up. But like, if that's what you want to do is spend your time spewing nastiness on, I thought Twitter was bad, but when you get into the, the, the Reddit, like circle drain shit bullshit, that's why anytime somebody sends me a Reddit thread, I'm always like, oof, because it's just garbage. And if you're on there hating on people, then I'm sorry, you are garbage. Um, remember when Stassi slapped Kristen? How can we forget Kenny G? There's no forgetting when Stassi slapped Kristen. What a moment. But yeah, I think it's strange that Jax liked the comment about marrying Stassi. Do we think he's still in love with Stassi? Do you think if Stassi was like, you know what? I, you know, will give you another chance. Do you think Jax would jump at it with Stassi? I don't know. That would be kind of weird, right? I don't even know how to go on Reddit. I don't either, Meg. I don't know how to work Reddit. The only time I know how to use Reddit is, is when people send me screenshots of it. Even yesterday when someone sent me the screenshot of that thread about me in the autism comments, um, they're like, that's disgusting. And he doesn't, he's not, and when he's not about Holly, and, okay, go rub one out. Um, feel better. Um, I was like, I don't even know how to find this. And Jock is like, you find it here. You do this and this is how you find it. And I was like, how? I still couldn't figure it out. He's like, you literally just go here and you scroll. And I was like, it's confusing. Um, so I'm glad I have a critical thinking brain and I don't know how to use Reddit. So the people on there. I'm being really unhinged. They didn't take like some probiotics. They didn't do something. Um, <laughs> so yeah. Um, what else? Oh, well, Brittany, I guess, on The Valley, which, again, I said I haven't seen yet. I've only seen, like, clips of it so far. Um, Brittany talks about how they haven't had sex. They've only had, like, sex twice a year. But before, they used to have sex, like, three to four times a day. And I'm like, okay, Larsa Pippen, calm down with your three to four. Three to four times a day is so many times a day to be having sex. Like, maybe, like, I don't know. Like, I have things to do. Like, who has time to have sex three to four times a day? Who wants to have sex three to four times a day? Like, I'm tired. Like, when are we doing this? In the morning, I got things to do. At the, in the evening, I'm tired, you know, maybe like a lunchtime quickie. Sure. You know, like maybe like a lunchtime quickie and like one time, for, like two times a day is quite, you know, the, the mission. But three to four times a day is wild. I mean, granted, you don't need to be having sex for like a full hour. It can be like a 15 minute quickie. But still, like, where do you even find you know, four 15 minute intervals to work that in, especially when you have a kid. I don't know. I have a job. I have dogs. I got shit to do. <laughs> like, I don't know. I couldn't imagine. That is wild. Yeah. Everyone's saying they must not have a job. They must not get anything done. I mean, yeah, truly. Who wants three to five times a day? It's too much work. It's so much work, you know? 
like maybe like I think my sweet spot is like maybe like three times a week. You know, like it doesn't even need to be daily. Like just like three times a week, I think solid, you know? Doesn't need to be that often, but three to four times a day is way too and the energy you have to put out. And like, aren't you tired after you know you climax? Right? Like that's just so many times. But twice a year is a little bit sad. <laughs> I agree. When she said twice a year, I was like, ooh, that's that's real bad. But Jack seemed to have taken some accountability for it, right? He's like, she deserves you know, she deserves to be desired. And he just wasn't giving that to her. He said, you know, having kids obviously affects that. But still, I mean, for those of you that have kids and are, and are in long term relationships, like what is your weekly to daily ratio? Five times a week, my husband and I have sex and we've been together 10 years. Five times a week is great. Do you still want to have sex with them five times a week? Like that's so many <laughs> I don't know, just the idea of like being with someone for 10 years and having and still banging them five times a week. <sighs> and then are you showering three to four times a day? Do you always shower after sex? That's a lot of showers. That's a lot of water. We're not, you know. And they have two kids. Wow, Kirsten has two kids and she still has sex five times a week with her husband. Nikki says um, she's been married. She's been they've been together 17 years and they have sex once or twice a week. See, that sounds ideal. You know, like Thursday nights, let's that's our night. Friday nights, that's our night. Like every day is a lot. I do like sex. I want to be very clear. I do like sex. I very much enjoy sex, but still. Kirsten says, yes, he's a six foot five muscle man. Ooh, get it, Kirsten. Yeah. Um, morning sex is the best thing. Well, I don't know. When you're gay, it's a little tougher. You can't just do it on a whim sometimes. And if you do, you got to pay the price. Um, so, yeah. Mm. Lots of Lumi. That's the thing. If you use lots of Lumi, that's a good one, Kenny G. You use lots of Lumi, you're always going to smell fresh and be fresh five times a week. That's a lot after a year. That is a lot. The fact that she's been married so long and like has, you know, that's just a lot of sex. That's so much sex. Like, do we need that much sex? Like, can't you just do a solo 10 minutes? Is that worse though when your partner's like getting off on their own, but not with you? This is a very interesting conversation for a Wednesday morning. But listen, it is hump day. Having a kid is excellent birth control. Sometimes I think my tubes are tying themselves. You know what's interesting? After having the two dogs, I was like, I think I want to put my baby plants on hold for a minute. But now, Jack's like stinky feet too. Ew. Um, but now... You know, that the dogs, they're about a year old. They're slowly starting to settle down just like a little bit. Um, I'm like, I think I could do it. I think I can do a baby and the two dogs, you know? I think I can, I think I can do it. I'm ready for it. I think I'm getting back into my baby fever mode, you know? Gotta remain limber. But listen, if you're having sex five times a week, you're gonna stay limber. Uh, I just had an entire conversation about having my boyfriend's tubes tied. Why are you going to tie your boyfriend's tubes? He loves it. I love it. We had our sons 10 and a half months apart. That means six weeks after having our first. I was, you got pregnant six weeks after having your first baby. Oh my gosh. That is so much sex, Kirsten. Um, would you want a baby boy or a baby girl? I want a baby boy. I feel like these Bravo Lebs lie about the amount of sex that they're having. Well, I don't know. I mean, uh, who is it? Kirsten in the live chat says, well, she says five times a week, not five times a day, four times a day. Well, they also don't really work, right? So you you just have time to lie around. Um, you have time to have sex four times a day. It's just, it's too, that to me is just too draining. Like I just, that's feels like just such an unproductive use of my time. It's not efficient, you know? At best, once a day. So, yeah. All right. Irish twins. Oh, because they're less than a year apart. Um, we just adopted a dog after having one of the kids, and I 
say taking care of a dog is way harder than a kid. Really tough. I have two big giant puppies. Um, five times a week tells you that they have some sort of support system from family or friends. Yes. Do these people not have a skincare routine? Who's got time for that? I don't know what a skincare routine has to do with having sex that many times a day. I mean, that's her skincare routine. She's getting four facials a day. That's how her skin stays so nice. It's all of all them facials she's getting. Or even if you out of five times a day, even if only one of them is a facial, a daily facial, wow. Rejuvenate. They probably don't even need a skincare routine because the climax is, you know. Uh, sex includes oral, right? I mean, oh, well, yeah, yeah. I would consider that if that's like one of the four times. Yeah. Maybe I need to get laid today. That sounds kind of nice, right? Today drained me. Um, yeah. Okay. What else do we have on? Well, I guess talking about baby making, we have Kristen Cavallari. Um, Kristen Cavallari says that she's ready to have another baby with her 24 year old boyfriend. Remember, she's dating the athlete Mark Estes. Is that his name? Um, and she, I guess, talked on her podcast about how, like, she's open to having another kid. Uh, she wants to have another kid, and she's already discussed it with him. And there, you know, he was also just, like, on a red carpet, and he was talking about it. And he's like, listen, we've had conversations. Kristen's, what, like, 38? Or is she 40 yet? Let's see. How old is Kristen Cavallari? Kristen Cavallari. Kristen Cavallari is 37 and he's 24. Okay, back to the live chat. Would you have a kid with a 24-year-old? She's 37. Um, already has, what, three kids? Clearly wants another. She she hasn't even been dating this guy for a year and she's already talking about having babies with him. He's 24 years old. 24 and 37. Like, it, I don't know. That's... So interesting. She can afford it. I'm sure she can afford to have a baby, but do you want to have a baby? Another baby with a 24 year old that you've been dating for less than a year? That's wild. I mean, it's one thing to bang a 24 year old, right? Because he's got stamina. He's got a good body. He's not in the dad bod phase. You know, like Jay, you know, her ex, uh, Jay Cutler, he, you know, he had the dad bod. He kind of let himself go. You know, he wasn't really doing it. And she's, Definitely staying fit. She'd be up in the gym working on her fitness. Um, good for her. But wow, people are, a lot of people in the live chat are in support of Kristen Cavallari having another baby. Listen, her boyfriend is hot. Let's be clear about that. Her boyfriend is a cutie. His name is Mark Estes. Um, and he is fit. He'd be looking good. I mean, my gosh, he is just, he is given life. You know what I mean? Um, he's got the tattoos, he's got the body, he's got the arms, he's just doing all the flexing. He's like, oh, yeah, he's like, look at me, I'm dating Kristen Cavallari. He's like, yeah, you know? And it's like, ooh. I mean, it's just like, he is hot, you know what I mean? But like, what do they talk about? What do they have in common? I think like his friends were also talking about like how, you know, Kristen would probably get along more. Like if they all met up, Kristen would probably get along more with his friends, girlfriends, moms, rather than his friends, girlfriends, which is true. Like, what do they talk about? You know, that man is looking for his, op his Oprah birthday, his Oprah baby mama. Yeah. Ugh. We're talking about Kristen Cavallari's boyfriend, Mark Estes. He's 24 years old and he's ready to be a daddy. He lives in Montana and Nashville. I mean, listen, I feel like these Nashville boys, these Montana boys, like they're ready to have babies in their 20s, you know? I'm just thinking like compatibility wise, that's how long have they even been dating? Uh, like it's been months. It hasn't. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, 
They haven't been dating very long. It's literally been less than a year. I mean, there's no confirmation of when they like officially started dating, but still. I'm just the fact that they're even having these conversations. Um Cray Cray. Cray Cray. Kristen is a red flag in general. Her and her husband broke things off, then got married, and then divorced, and said she was pretty much miserable the whole time. They no no no. They were engaged and then split and then got packed together and then got married. She said that there were red flags that she ignored, right? And that there was a reason she left him the first time. And she said that she should have never gotten back with him the second time and married him the second time. Uh, but like they had babies and they had kids. And I think, I don't know, I think when you have kids, like there's more of an incentive to stick it out and try to make it work for the sake of the family. I don't think she did anything wrong necessarily, but I don't know if I would say that. Well, I mean, I guess that isn't, I don't know. We've all been in that situation, right? Where we're like, oh, I know that there are red flags, but like maybe he's changed. Maybe he's different now. And like people can change, right? People can change. They can bleach their red flags. Like I think people can, you know, move on from their red flags. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Her man is 13 years older than her son. Yeah. Mark 13, like he was 13 when she was having it, which is also just so weird to think about in that context. Listen, I think he's a fun rebound and her, you know, practice making babies. Great. Actually making babies with this dude. I don't know. People can grow up just not all people. Yeah. See, I think it was possible. I think she believed that Jay had grown. I think the issue was there. The issue with Jay is he wanted to stay at home wife. And I think she was comfortable with that, that life until her career had a resurgence. And I don't think he was willing to allow her to then be the star of the show because he was so used to being the star of the show. And she was so happy leaving Hollywood once she had Jay and she wanted to settle down and she wanted to be a mom. And then eventually as the kids started to get older, she wanted more than that. And I don't think that that's wrong, but it just, you know, it just is what it is. All right. Well, that's what I got for you guys today. Hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. Even though Joe was late. Joe be coming up and coming up late. Um, but then Joe gets mad if I start my live late. Ooh. Meg says, can we please talk about Faith saying that Lala held a knife to her in her lawsuit? What is that? I'm so confused. It's it's fake. We discussed it on yesterday's podcast, Meg. Um, I don't believe she, no, I don't, she, I think it was like a butter knife situation. Like it wasn't as, it, it wasn't as big as Faith. Well, remember Faith also tried or claimed that she was suing Stassi a couple years ago. So I think this is just another press attention grab, to be honest with you. But thank you for listening to No Filter with Zach Peter, guys. You can tune in every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, streaming live on YouTube first thing in the morning and then available on all podcast platforms. So be sure to tune in, subscribe on Spotify, subscribe on uh, Apple Podcasts. Be sure to, if you want to become a member, we have bonus episodes every week for No Filter Plus members on Apple Podcasts and for Zach Pack members on YouTube. I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. Um, have a wonderful rest of your hump day. I hope some of you get humped today. I mean, if you have the stamina and the time, why not go for that four to five times a day? Get it, baby. Get it, get it, get it. All right. Give me a follow. Just playing Zach to keep up with me. Follow the podcast at No Filter with Zach. Catch Disaster Daters if you haven't done so yet. It'll get you nice and horny. So tune into Disaster Daters, my other show. You can watch it exclusively on Spotify or listen on all podcast platforms. All right, guys. Ciao for now. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. Mm.